did you ever think you'd have a career like this and get to 200 games? It's pretty exciting. Well, I'd like to get to 200. I'm only at 100 now. But, uh, no, I think um, when, I first, when I first arrived, um, getting one game would have, would have been satisfactory. And um, my second year uh, was the arrival of Shane Romford and, and Mark Seabee. And I thought, you know, I was probably going to be capped at about eight games. And, um, you know, I'm really happy to be able to, to reach 100. Do you remember like when you first came here, your memories, like from a rugby background obviously, and then did you ever think you'd make it in AFL? I think um, the club gave me a lot of confidence that players had done it before me in terms of coming from, from other sports in, in Australia. Um, and certainly coming from a rugby rugby background, the culture of AFL is a lot different. Uh, I always remember my first game, I think it was round 11 versus Collingwood at ANZ Stadium. There was about 50 or 60,000 people there. And to see the banners and the cheer squads was, I mean, it was totally new to me and it was uh, pretty, pretty exciting. I guess neither rugby or Australian rules are really Canadian sports. Uh, mm. How did you get into rugby before you got into Australian rules? I think rugby in my hometown of Victoria, British Columbia, it's um, West Coast Canada, um, really temperate sort of climate, so you can play rugby all year round there. Uh, it's actually quite well played in, in high school, uh, and so it was the biggest sport at our high school, and, and naturally as an, as an athlete at that school, you, you played rugby, so that's how I got into rugby. And then clearly AFL is, is uh, very much a boutique sport in Canada. Um, you know, people are starting to learn about it, bits and pieces. Now with broadcast rights, I mean, it's amazing. People can get games all the time there. Um, so it, it's a sport, I think, that, that gets a bit of uh, vision from the outer, but not, it doesn't have a huge following, that's for sure. How, how long did it take for you to feel like, you know, comfortable playing the game, um, obviously playing it at AFL standard? Yeah, I think when you're first starting out, there's, you, you sort of go through peaks and troughs. And uh, I remember there was a game against North Melbourne out here. I think, I think it was my second year that I, I felt pretty good about how I would played and I felt like maybe I could have a, a, a real shake at it. Um, and but that said, I mean the game is constantly evolving. The rules are constantly evolving. So there certainly are times when you when you feel like um, you're a bit behind. But um, I guess you're just trying constantly trying to get better. What's the last year and a half for you been like? Is the, the first choice ruckman very much the, the go-to guy in that area? And what's such a responsible part of the, the team and the game? Yeah, I think it was a, a big change for myself. I mean, obviously having Shane to share the ruck duties with um, makes things quite easy. He does a lot of work out there. Um, and last year probably it took me a while to adjust. I had my first compromise preseason last year and probably came into the season a bit undone and uh, probably when I felt like I was starting to get up and going a bit in round five or six against Brisbane I, I did a hamstring and that put me back a bit. And by the tail end of the year I felt quite comfortable and felt like I was competing reasonably well against some of the, some of the better ruckmen in the comp and I certainly feel now capable and um, comfortable with the role. Any time you sort of doubted yourself and thought yeah, maybe you can't make it here? I think, yeah, as I said, that, that second year when, when Mark Seavey and, and Shane Mumford arrived, I, you know, they both came on three and four year deals respectively, and uh, I felt like it was time for me go, to go back to rugby. Um, you know, unfortunately for Mark, he, he broke his ankle that year, and, and it gave me sort of 18 games to, to show what I had, and, and that was enough to sort of um, give the club confidence to resign me again. So, uh, yeah, that was probably back then. And, and now with the Rugby World Cup on this year, I mean, do you have a doubt that, you know, geez, it'd be nice to be playing rugby still, or are you, you're pretty happy here? Yeah, certainly I suppose the difference between playing AFL football and test rugby is that sort of underlying emotion of, of playing for your country and, and whilst I'm an Australian citizen now I certainly do feel very Canadian um, but I mean week in week out AFL football is a, a fantastic sport to be playing, uh, the crowds are amazing, we have fantastic fans here in Sydney um, and you know wherever you go the reception's great so I, I love playing AFL football. Do you still you. consume a fair bit of rugby? Do you follow because your team? It's really hard actually because um, the games are played at the same time as the AFL games and and usually we're sort of doing homework on the weekend watching our opposition so it's hard to watch rugby games but certainly I support the teams out of the SCG, the, the Waratahs, um, you know I hope they do well this year in the Super 15. You actually played against one or two, you actually played in, against Adam Ashley Cooper who's still going around. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah I did and uh, Drew Mitchell and Lottie DeCure and guys like yeah. that in, in the World Cup and um, you know it's, uh, it's interesting to, to watch the rugby and how it's evolved and um, certainly over in Europe it's, it's really gaining some momentum and, and North America as well you're seeing the Americans win sevens tournaments now and uh, it's exciting for the game. I'm, I'm certainly going to put my hand up to go to go watch the Sydney sevens and maybe if I'm lucky horse will let me play. <laughs> How close did you get to um, giving up AFL when, when, when they got CV and, and knowing I don't think I was close to giving up but I, I sort of thought that maybe my time time was up. Um, I think had, had Mark not been uh, injured that year probably I would have looked to go back and play rugby. Thankfully for myself that came quite early in the year so um, it wasn't something that I was dwelling on but but definitely I, I felt like like my turn was up when, when, when those two guys arrived. Could you play rugby um, once your footy days are finished? 
oh, maybe in the second row, not at fullback or, or wing. I've lost a bit of lost a bit of pace. I was going to say, but I mean, because I mean, you, everyone thinks of rugby as a big physical contact sport, but rucking is an intensely physical thing. Is that take a much greater toll of your body than rugby ever did? I think aerobically, AFL is extremely demanding. I, I, I think every game that you play of AFL football, you come off the field feeling absolutely spent, no matter how hard the game's been. You're always running around, for myself, about 13 half, 14K a game and throwing 100 ruck contests, and all of a sudden it's, it's a pretty, pretty tough night. So um, physically, they're, they're very different, sort of different games, but um, I think AFL, in terms of a, a real toll on your body, is, is more difficult than rugby. Can you tell us the, um, the impact that Grand Final had in 2012? Had for, for you, just in the sense of as an achievement in winning mm. a flag, and then also in playing so well and in such a big game. Yeah, I think um, the special thing about 2012 that was that it was such a team effort. I think you know we went into that final series only having won one of our, our previous four games, but still having supreme confidence as a club that, that we could get it done. Um, the, the, all the players banded to get to well together so well, and I always remember. I think the second day after the grand final, being back home, sitting on my deck and, and reading the paper, and they, they went through the stories of every player on our list. And I think it started with Ree Shaw. And um, you know, his story coming from Collingwood, you know, the family there, and, and you know, breaking family ties to come up here, it sort of, it sort of evokes emotion. And um, you know, there's a lot of stories like that at our club, and it's, it's just a, a great club to play for and something I'm, I'm really proud to have played for. You played against the greatest players in two different codes. You played against the Dan Carters, the Richie McCaws, the, the George Smiths, mm. the Chris Lathams. Where, can, can you make any comparison between the great champions of one sport and the great of another that you've played against? Yeah, I think um, I think w w you probably don't get an insight into what the champions are like when you play against them. I mean, obviously, they're very hard on the field, but you get a good insight off the field. And I remember having Todd Blackadder in Edinburgh as a, as a captain, and um, he was hard as nails. He was as hard as they come. Um, tough All Black, uh, captain of Canterbury, won a lot of super super rugby with them and, and then arriving here and, and having a real contrast in Brett Kirk and the contrast being that you know about, about a foot and a half in height and probably you know 25 30 kilograms in weight but in terms of the way they led and the way that they were hard at at everything that they did um, those sorts of those sorts of guys are the ones that, that impress you and that, that you really feel privileged to play with. How much longer do you think you've got me joked about maybe getting 200 but I mean in terms of AFL yep. I guess you, you haven't played that many games you probably yep. haven't got the wear and tear that some other guys yeah. of your age may have I mean, yeah. do you think about that in terms of how long you got? I think you sort of have to take every season as it comes I mean I'm, I'm contracted next year and I think um, you know the decision gets gets made for you and usually it's it's form um, and that usually correlates to how your body's doing so so long as my form's okay and, and my body's okay um, I'll want to play as many games as I can. Do you think this milestone has kind of vindicated that decision because it was, must have been a big risk for you to come across and all right you could always have gone back and perhaps played rugby again but it was a, a huge leap of faith on your part to come here yeah. and take tackle a game you'd never played. Yeah well I think it's it's probably sometimes there's a bit of risk every weekend for a horse when he picks me I think he, <laughs> it's probably a vindication for his patience really um, and uh, no, definitely. I mean, I feel really well settled in Sydney. I've, I've got a family here, two kids who were born born in, in the system here, and I feel very privileged to be living in such a, a great country and, and particularly a great city. So you've obviously been the pupil when you first arrived, 100 games. You the teacher now, and what's that transition been like to, to sort of now helping this on the young guys? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, we have a mentorship program at, at the club, and, and I'm part of a, a team, uh, two guys who who mentor three other players, and um, it's something that we really take pride in is is trying to trying to accelerate the development of our, our young guys and um, certainly I feel now after after seven years in the caper that I have a few tricks in, in the in the rucks and I'm trying to pass those on to, to Sammy and, and Tommy and, and Toby so um, hopefully we can get those guys up going well and, and keep a, a strong ruck department in the future. And Gold Coast this weekend, I mean I know they've obviously had their struggles and people concentrate on the problems they've had on and off the field but I'm, I'm assuming it's a game where you can't afford to, to drop your intensity at all? No, not at all. I think every week in, in AFL football is very very difficult and we touched on it before in a physical sense and also in a mental one um, certainly if you take your foot off the gas you know, clubs, clubs can scare you and, and Gold Coast is no different. They've, we're under no illusions the talent they have on, on their list. Whilst they're not playing particularly well as, as, a, as a team they can beat you one-on-one -on -one at, at any time so we're going in there and treating them as a, as a very good club.